Hello, Anchor Chargers are back. This time, Apple exclusives. More big chargers, 150 and 240 watts. These chargers both share some features in that each can do 140 watts on one USB-C port, so the maximum any current Apple device can handle for single port use. But then, also has three other USB-C ports available. And that's the thing. These are all USB-C ports, no USB-A ports. There are certainly some things to check out, like do these have limited modes of operation like other Apple chargers, or are they more like other Anchor chargers? As usual, the technical details will be measured on these chargers. The voltage, power, ripple, thermals, isolation, so many things. And, as always, it will get technical, so ask questions if you have them. These chargers come in white and share some appearance characteristics with Apple. They also have paper-only packaging, paper-wrapped adapter, and cardboard boxes with cardboard pull tabs. Appearance-wise, they certainly seem like premium adapters, and I would expect this for an Apple exclusive. The question is, are they going to hold up to Apple's performance levels, or are they just sheep in wolf's clothing? There is an affiliate link which earns me a couple of percent but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. First, time to get a look at them. The Anchor 150 watt charger has a soft rubber outer feel to it, certainly unique. It is as advertised with four USB-C ports. The back plate has some information on it. The safety listing, of course, is a main feature. This is usually some other company's marking on the device. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device has that and also it has the six in a circle, which is an indication of power efficiency and idle power consumption being at least a certain level. This is something that can get checked out in the data section. The user manual for this one does explain a little of the specifications and how some of the power distribution works. There is certainly a power hierarchy. The manual does have some efficiency numbers and things, as well as a fairly conservative operating temperature range. The 240 watt charger is about the same, but everything is bigger, and the cable is attached. No, it is not removable. The finish is again that white rubber-like feel. It does seem like that power cable is the adapter low chemical type cable. I wonder if this will flake into pieces like the USB cables in the future. Wouldn't be great for a mains cable. It is rather thin, but it meets the expectations that it needs to. It isn't a power strip after all. The charger has the safety listing and the six in a circle. The user manual for this one is also very similar to the other, but the main note on this one is the 140 watt port seems to be independent of the other three ports. So you can fast charge your laptop and not interrupt other things or vice versa. Okay, so the basic modes of operation for the 150 watt charger are limited. As an Apple special adapter, it doesn't have too many modes of operation available. It's really strictly USB PD 3.1 modes or 3.0 modes. It does have the AVS mode, but only the 15 to 28 volt variation, not the newer lower voltage and lower power option. This and the 140 watt mode are only available on the first USB-C port. The other ports all do share with it too, so renegotiation is a fairly normal affair with this one. Your phones and laptops are used to this, but if you want to use this to power a mini PC, keep moving. The renegotiation is very fast though, so not like the chargers of old. In terms of the basic efficiency numbers, this charger looks decent. It's over 90% efficient on both 120 volts and 230 volts of AC power, while keeping the idle power consumption low on both power sources. This is a good showing for a subcompact power supply. In looking at some more of the detailed data, the ripple voltage is quite low, but these anchor chargers do suffer similar problems as other anchor chargers I've seen. The DC voltage in the 20 volt mode is getting too low. I am using a very short cable here, and if I even try the anchor 140 watt USB-C to C cable, the 20 volt is 18.8 volts. If you use a longer cable, like two meters, you may run into issues trying to get full speed out of this device. Okay, moving on to the 240 watt USB power adapter, another big one. The USB modes on this charger are basically the same as the other USB brick. This one just has one extra feature and that with the extra watts, the first USB-C port is always on. This is basically two power adapters in one. 
a 140 watt USB-C adapter and a 100 watt three port USB adapter. So the 100 watt adapter will renegotiate on plugs and unplugs. And like the other adapter, it is very fast at this. It does not share power evenly though. In checking the adapter for its modes of operations, it's pretty sparse compared to some other chargers, but that's expected for the Apple exclusive. It just needs BD and that's what it has. In terms of the basic efficiency numbers, this charger has some problems. As a whole, these numbers don't look bad, but if you wanna cram as many watts into a tiny box, it's not gonna be able to get the heat out. The idle power consumption looks fine, but the efficiency numbers on 120 volts and 230 volts AC are not good for a power adapter at this power level. The efficiency is actually a bit worse on 230 volts AC. Anyway, with values like these, I am worried about the thermal performance of this charger, which we'll check out a bit later on. And looking at the detailed data for this charger, it is again much the same story as the 150 watt charger, but in this case the ripple voltage is a little higher, still acceptable. The 20 volt mode voltage is on the low side again. The 28 volt mode is also on the lower side, still in tolerance, but with a very short USB cable. Use a long cable and it won't be in tolerance with a device that can use maximum power. It'll probably top out at 130 watts with a typical two meter USB-C cable. These adapters both share the same characteristics under light load efficiency and light load power level. This can be a phone idling after charging has completed or leaving the cables plugged in for various devices. USB-C to C cables do not have this effect as they don't have the ability to turn the power on, but other USB cables and adapters do have this effect. So with a couple Apple cables and just adapters plugged in, the idle power consumption does jump on this device to about a watt or so. Just something to keep in mind. Just the act of negotiating for nine volts will change the amount of idle power consumption fairly significantly as this is the point where the power factor correction circuit kicks on. The thermal testing gets a little interesting with these chargers. I have previously tested the 240 watt anchor charger with the USB-A port and it did fairly well. It did get hot. So hopefully they haven't changed much here. These chargers are left to soak at full load to see how long before they trip up or turn off. I call the test at about one hour, as for normal charging duties, this is about as bad as it's going to get. The 150 watt anchor adapter made it the distance. This charger certainly gets hot, but it was able to stay on and showed no signs of stopping or slowing down at one hour. The 240 watt was a different story. This charger didn't make it. It got close, but it did shut down. Only the 140 watt port though. The 100 watt port stayed on. So this is certainly a charger with the maximum power in mind. In terms of isolation, which is the thing that separates the danger side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, these are both good performers. A leaky adapter is often the tingling feeling you get from certain wall adapters, especially with a metal bodied laptop. Anchor generally does a very good job of isolation in their chargers. There have been numerous teardowns over the years. I've done some and I'm always pleased with what I find in Anchor chargers. The isolation test is carried out in a non-destructive way and these chargers don't come close to showing any issues. You have to push the voltage a little higher to find some of the problems with the real cheap chargers, but some of them will show even with 500 volts AC, the poor isolation. These anchors are both very good though. Okay, time to compare these chargers. There are so many chargers on the market now. Some are fake garbage, some are extremely impressive, at least for a little while, and some stand the test of time. The Apple 140 watt USB adapter is practically a dinosaur in this day and age, but it's one of the efficiency and performance leaders in any category. It's a good charger. It and many others will be compared to these new anchor chargers to see if there are any major differences. In terms of weight and size, these new anchor adapters seem to be doing well. The anchor 240 watt adapter is a bit on the heavier side very similar to the 240 watt predecessor. I didn't count the metal base in the size, but it looks like I did last time. These are really the same size. The 150 watt adapter is a standout though. It looks like it's both a reasonable weight and a very compact adapter for the power level. This is not bad at all. You get a few extra watts for not much more weight versus the Apple 140 watt adapter and the smaller size, and you get three extra ports. 
In terms of value, these Anchor Chargers were never going to be the value champions. They probably won't go on sale too often either, being on the Apple site only. The Sabrin and Ugreen, while both also being expensive and differently equipped, both have more ports, more power, and better power options for multiple devices. So certainly something to consider. Anchor is not the value option at this power level. When looking at the idle graph for these, there are no problems with these new Anchor power adapters. They all perform quite well, drawing near zero power while idling. Apple and others also achieve these very good marks. The Sabrent has a display in it and it consumes a little bit of power to keep that going, so the idle power on that device is not amazing. But there is that little issue where if you plug in certain cables and adapters to these chargers, that idle power consumption number doesn't mean anything and they use quite a bit more power. It's still not a crazy number of watts, but it can be more than one watt. The average power consumption graph is where there starts to be some differentiation among these different adapters. As seen earlier, the Anchor 240 watt Apple exclusive is quite a bit lower in efficiency versus the 150 watt adapter, and that makes the 240 watt stand out as the worst offering here. Just comparing that to the previous generation Prime 240 watt adapter shows a substantial difference in performance. This again is where that Apple 140 watt adapter shows what can be done. It's very good. The Ugreen 500 watt behemoth is included because it's also very good. I'm not exactly sure why the 240 watt isn't as good, but they certainly did change some of the internal workings of this power supply versus the older Prime adapter. The 150 watt looks fine. Conclusion time. So there are two different USB power adapters here. The performance is very different among these two adapters. So time to discuss some conclusions of each adapter. The 240 watt four port USB-C anchor adapter has some issues. I doubt you will be able to fully load this device, so it probably won't overheat in practice, but the fact that the efficiency is so much lower than even its own namesake means this adapter is a skip. It has lots of power and it's nice that it's modern with four USB-C ports, but it isn't great that it can't compete with the same adapter from the same company, but just not an Apple exclusive version. I did expect a little more and I got a little less. The 150 watt four port USB-C adapter, however, was a refreshing change. It has good efficiency numbers, good isolation, and generally better performance numbers. The ripple voltage is very low, and so is the primary voltage on the 20 volt mode, and this could present a problem trying to get the maximum power delivered over longer USB cables. I've seen this problem with other anchor power adapters in the past, and in general, I haven't heard it to be too much of an issue. It's nitpicking though. This is a perfectly acceptable power adapter made primarily for Apple devices. It uses standard USB power delivery and it doesn't offer any other charging modes other than the ones that Apple requires. Let me know if these anchors are the ones you use and why one of these fits the bill. For me, I'm gonna stick with my older Anchor 240 watt adapter. It's just better. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.